squad still here? And it over that thing. Your dark soul. Your dark soul. Hello, welcome back. Today is a very exciting one because we are doing the greatest ever Dark Souls boss to exist. And if you disagree with that, well then that's okay because your opinion's totally valid. But he is the greatest boss in the Dark Souls series. He's the guy at the world's end, the Red Hood. It is Slave Knight Gale. Yes, he, he is in all his wonderful glory with the flowing cape, his broken sword. I've primed him black already so he can just get things kick-started pretty quickly on this episode. But before I want to go too much further, I want to give a shout out to Brock on Instagram, who sent me a message and sent me a link for a bunch of STLs that he's engineered. This Slave Knight Gale is one of them. He's done a bunch of others from Bloodborne as well. So I'm going to leave a link below for his Instagram and his tag. So go show him some love for this. It's a really, really fantastic STL. I've done it a couple of times before and I'm a massive, massive fan of it. He's my favorite boss. One of the best laws behind the boss. He's survived to the end of time. He is the climax to the end of the Soul series. Everything about this boss makes him incredible. Enough jibber jabber. I'm gonna start off straight away. I'm gonna dive right in and we're gonna get him highlighted before we start painting him. So I'm gonna be using some contrast paints for his cape. So I want a Zenithal highlight to begin with as I do with most of my models. White ink in an airbrush, spraying down to generate a light source. There he is, highlighted, looking pretty cool. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the cape done and I'm gonna get it done with some red contrast paint because it'll work quite nicely with our highlighting job. So I've got some Blood Angels red. We have one red cape reacting lovely to the zenithal highlight. Really nice and vibrant. We've still got our shading and our highlights still left in. Job done, leave it there. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna base all his armor and I'm gonna base it all with a layer of Basilicanum Gray. And that way we'll have a good base to work with on top of the zenithal highlighting. So over all the armor parts, I'm just gonna do one layer of this Basilicanum Gray. Nice. So that's everything coated in Basilicanum Gray. That's, you know, armor and weaponry. Next thing we can do is, <laughs> woo, I'm gonna use metallic pigments for this model just because the uh, it's really, really intricate and very textured and detailed, so dry brushing metallic pigments on it would react quite nicely with it. So I'm using some Iron Warriors and I'm just gently dry brushing on this metallic pigment. My main goal here is to dry brush on these metallic pigments on the side where the zenithal highlight hit. So it will sort of start fading into the Basilicanum Grey the further on the right hand side that it is. So I'm just kind of like dry brushing left to right like that. Just so I'm slowly start brightening up one side and it will create that illusion of light. So we have our Iron Warriors dry brushed on to the armor. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do that again, but I'm gonna be doing it with some Necron compound, which is a much brighter dry metallic paint. And I'm gonna do that over the sort of same areas that we had the Iron Warriors, but just like a little more concentrated pockets rather than all over, just to accentuate some highlights. There we are, there's our highlighted armor. Relatively straightforward so far. So the next parts are like these sort of like leather parts, the wraps, things like that. I'm gonna load up some leathery colors, Rhinox hide. I'm also gonna be using some Mournfang brown and some Zandri dust. Snake bite leather, just get this boot part coated. I'm gonna base the wraps and all the leather parts 
with this snake bite leather. And then I'm gonna work in those three different brown tones to accentuate them. So all the sort of little sticky out parts, all the ones that look like cloth, I'm gonna coat them all in this snake bite leather. So there's all the leather parts based with snake bite leather. Cool. And I'm kind of just gonna go around and add some Rhinox hide to the parts that we've done the snake bite leather armor to. Just add some dark detailing to parts. With that, I'm gonna move on, do the same kind of thing with Mornfang Brown and just add this as a mid-tone back over all the parts that I've just done with Rhinox Hide, just to generate a bit of differentiation in color and tone. Leather's coming along quite nicely. And lastly, I'm gonna do the same again, but I'm gonna move up and I'm moving up into the Zendry Dust and I'll be using this as a highlight color. Same areas, same method. There we are. There's all our leather parts highlighted, etc. Next thing on the agenda, we need to do the exposed skin underneath the armor and we need to do his beard and his little nose. So for his exposed skin, it's kind of like charred. It's like really old skin. It sort of like looks very like hollowed underneath. It's not normal skin. So we're gonna use some Garagax Sewer contrast paint just so we can get a sort of like dark base underneath it to which we can sort of like add different colors to. So all these sort of like tiny little parts that sort of like sit between the armor. I'm just gonna sort of thin down the contrast paint just so it's like a wash so we can just sort of like seep into all the nooks and crannies so we don't have any sort of exposed zenithal highlighting left. So we've got all the sort of like exposed skin painted up with the Garagak Sewer. What I am gonna do is I'm gonna take some of this rattling grime contrast and I'm gonna use this to paint the center because I don't wanna be using like a black contrast. I think it'll be a, just a tad too harsh. So this is a sort of like bit lighter than black mix between Garagak Sewer and Black Legion contrast. And I'm just gonna paint this center like so. What I need to do, base the beard with some, probably with some white. So Gail's beautiful beard. Just get this sucker nice and white. There's a lovely, lovely white beard. So we're just gonna mix in a few different colors to sort of spruce this beard up a tad. And to do that, I'm gonna grab some Mechanica Standard Grey and some Abaddon Black. So a 50-50 mix of those colors. And I'll just start, just start filling the top in with some of the greys. And then the further it goes down, it can start blending into white. There we are, his little beard done. While I'm here, I'm just gonna color in his little nose. And I'll just quickly base it with a touch of rat skin flesh. What I really want to create is a glow effect from the hole in his chest and glow effects on the sword. So I'm gonna be using some airbrushing to do a glow with some white and some reds. And I'm gonna start off by marking out the glow areas. So it's gonna be the sort of bottom half of the circle and it's gonna glow down and it's gonna give me a reflection on this sort of like cut part of the armor. So with some Corax white, I'm basically just detailing where I see the brightest part of the glow being. I'm trying to sort of like make that vortex thing so it's sort of like wide down at the bottom here and it sort of shrinks into the middle. And for the sword, which should be a bit more straightforward than doing that, I'm just gonna kind of like pick out areas on the sword. I don't wanna make it like lightning because it's not like lightning, but I sort of wanna make it a bit more interesting. So there are some cut marks in it. I'm just gonna go over. And I'm just gonna kind of repeat that process on the other side. There's our sword on one side. 
I like it. It's not bad. And there's our sword on the other side, along with our center. So they're all sort of my points of glow, basically. So what I'm now going to do is going to get the airbrush back out. So I'm going to start with the sword, and basically I'm going to create a halo with white ink going along these lines that we've created. So there's our kind of excuse, the compressor in the background, it'll start wobbling for a bit. There is the sword with a sort of glowed halo put across it and on the other side as well. And in the middle, we've got the sort of strong point of the white in the center here, sort of fading out through those lines that I kind of created. So the next step we want to do is now actually having the red glow put into it. So, so now we have the white ink on, I'm gonna be putting in some of this pyrrole red ink. It's a very strong, vivid pigment, which is what I want for this glow. All right, fingers crossed, so we'll hope for the best. So we have airbrushed the sword and it's sort of looking like this, which is not too bad. It's kind of the sort of thing I was going for and the center as well. The main job left to do is take some black wash. So I'm gonna take some Abaddon Black, really thin it down, and I'm just gonna go over pretty much all areas, especially over where the glow is, to just sort of really bring out some more of the shadows where we've been building up different colors. We've lost contrast, so very thin wash of Abaddon Black, and we're just gonna pretty much go over all the shadows on this model. And let's start bringing this contrast up a bit. Okay, so we have added some black wash all over. Gale on the cape, on the sword. So we're sort of getting a bit more transition between the bright and the dark on the glow, on his sort of armor, on the glow in the middle there. Just so he's sort of like a bit of contrast on him, make him stand out a bit. I'm gonna go back to the sword and I'm gonna just start building up a little bit of brightness in the red lines that we've got. Take some thin layers of Corax white and basically just re-go over areas within the red just to kind of beef up some lighter tones. And what I'm going to do with that is I'm just going to take some Mephiston red and I will take this down to a wash and basically just sort of go over those whites with a very thin wash of red. There's our sword. Mr. Gale, Mr. Gale, you need something to stand on. Luckily, I have a base. So I've got this base here, which is a sort of standard long kind of base. And I've just kind of glued some foam pieces sort of cut into the shapes of rocks on it. So we can sort of stand on this. Primed it black. So all I just need to do is grab a dry brush and I'm just gonna grab some dry paint. So I'm gonna begin with some Dawnstone and then I'm gonna put some long beard gray on. Basically, I'm just gonna dry brush on some lighter tones, just sort of dirty dry brush over this base, just to give it a bit of lightness and texture. Then we can add some extra bits to it and get them glued on. So nothing special. Nice. Right, I'm gonna take that red contrast and I'm gonna grab a shader brush. I'm gonna kind of flick it, bang. Bang, bang, like that. Just gonna create some blood splatters because he is devouring some corpses when you find him. So like nice subtle detail there. I say subtle, it's not that subtle to be honest, but I'm gonna grab some of my favorite, favorite, favorite coagulated blood. And I'm gonna kind of just build up a couple of pools of blood. That's quite cool, I think. And all I'm gonna do is add some dead shrubbery to the base, and then we can glue this big daddy on. So I've got here some lovely sort of like black tufts, as if it was kind of like grass, whatever you wanna say, burnt charred grass. Lovely. So there's our blood-filled base for Gale. 
I like it. So, I'm just gonna find an adequate place for him to go. I think I had him suited to go there. Yeah. Okay, Sir Gale, let's get your feet glued up, shall we? Now he's just gonna sit there and dry for a few minutes. And whilst he's drying, I'm just gonna tidy up. I will be back with you momentarily for the final reveal. There he is, Slave Knight Gale, the greatest boss from Dark Souls. Finally done, all in all, I'm pretty pleased with how he looks. I think the base is quite cool. I liked adding in the extra blood and stuff and the blood splatters on the rocks and the floor and everything. I think it adds to a sort of like good dynamic piece, I guess as you would call it. There he is, that is how the main man is looking. I think that's quite a nice piece. All that's left is to say thank you so much once again, everyone who has joined me for this video, everyone who has made it this far through the video, thank you so much for watching, I appreciate you. That about does it from me. If you want to argue with me about who the greatest boss in Dark Souls is, then leave a comment below. I'll happily debate with you. I'll leave it there. And once again, thank you for watching. I'll let you get back to your days. And I'll see you all on Sunday for more Bloodborne stuff. Peace out. What still here? And did both that thing? Your dark soul.